Hey, what's up everybody? Abbas here from Golden Motor. So if you have a pre-built e-bike and it's not working anymore and it's not under warranty anymore, uh, in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the common troubleshooting steps that you can do. And then if it's un out of warranty and you figure out which part is not working, I'm gonna show you how to change that part and uh, make it work again. So every e-bike or any electric vehicle for that matter has three main components. It has a battery, it has a motor, and it has a controller. If there's a problem with within these three main components is usually the controller. Uh, the battery and motor are least likely to go out. First of all, check if your display is turning on. If it's not turning on, you wanna check all your connections. Before you even start diagnosing these three main components, check if your wires are good, there's no cuts, uh, no water that's leaked into the wires. You wanna check all your connections. If you have a electrical cutoff, sometimes there's a magnetic brake sensor, so you wanna check the position of your magnet, or sometimes like the brake is engaged and you won't even know. And that's, you know, you press the throttle all you want or pedal assist all you want, the motor's not gonna turn on. So these main things you gotta check if, the, if it's good. If you have display on, and the battery, so battery most of the time will be good. What I usually do, I take the battery off. If the display is on, I take the battery, I check the voltmeter. If it's giving me the proper range in the, the voltage, and actually on the screen I'll put down, like if you have a 52 volt battery, there's a particular range you wanna be. So if it's giving you a particular range, that's, even if it has some voltage, but it's like really, really low, like 16 volts or 20 volts, your battery is basically dead, right? So there is a specific voltage that your battery has to be between for a 52 volt battery or a 48 volt battery or 36. So on your screen, I'll put that range for you right now. So on this bike, I checked the voltage on the battery. I have proper voltage. So that's good news because usually the battery is the most expensive part to replace, but it can be done. Basically you can get a DIY battery Put that on there, uh, take this one out, put it on there and just hook it up to the controller and I mean it can be done. It's, it's better than throwing away the whole bike or just using it as a regular bike. So you can change the battery but it's a little bit more expensive option. Second thing, so my on this bike the display was working. If your display is not working, you want to get like a cheap replacement just to rule out is it the display that's not, it's acting up or not. Then you want to check the wiring harness, the main wiring harness that's going from the controller to the throttle and the display. And sometimes it's just an easy fix, the throttle is just not properly doing it. So you don't even have to get a throttle. This one was a pedal assist bike. So you want to just turn it, turn your bike, and if your motor kicks on, that means the motor is good, it might just be your throttle. So you just got to change out your throttle and you're good to go. On this bike, I checked the throttle. What happened was when I pressed the throttle, the bike was trying to go. You can see it can kind of gives a little kickstart, but then it stops. That tells you the throttle is working, the voltage is going proper, the display was working, wiring connections were good. Now it's either the controller or the motor. So my first instinct on this bike was is the controller, right? But there is another way of changing, just to kind of rule out the motor. Make sure your motor is not the issue. So I'm gonna show you right now what I did to rule out if it's the motor or not. So like I said, most of the time the issue is the controller, but we do wanna rule out if it's your motor or not. So this bike was out of warranty. This customer was gonna, you know, throw away this $1,700 bike. We said, might as well diagnose it. And if it's a motor, we can change the motor for you. But I wanted to rule this out before we change the motor or the controller. So every e-bike or most e-bike motors are you know, brushless motors, that's why they call BLDC motors. Um, so they work on three phases. You can work it on two phase, but it won't be as powerful as three phases. I don't need to connect this to a controller or anything. All I got to do is connect two of the phases to a battery and your motor will start turning. And how do you know which one are the phase wires? Well almost 100% or actually most of the time your phase wires will be much thicker. If you can see over here, the phase wires are the blue, yellow and green one. They're much thicker than the other hall sensor wires. So in this case, I actually did connect it to a battery and it turns out the problem was with the motor. 
So in this case, it was the motor because when I connected the battery to the phase wires, the two of the phase wires, the motor seemed like it was trying to kick in and then it would stop. Um, that told me because otherwise if it was if it was not a motor problem the motor will go it won't go as fast because it's not connected to all three phase wires but it will go this one it was trying to go and then it would stop so in this one we figured out that it was the motor and then i called the customer up and said you know hey is there anything you would have done to kind of burn the motor up and he told me like he was on a a uh, hunting trip and like he went crazy on it and like, he overheated the motor and basically burned something inside. So in this case, it was the motor, uh, but most of the time it is a controller issue. So what do you do if it is, if the motor is working fine, what do you do if it's a controller issue? So controller is the cheapest fix. And most of these universal controllers work with any motor. This one is a Bafang hub motor. Um, I'm gonna make a video of this soon to kind of pair up the Magic controller. This is a universal controller. It works with any hub motor. So I'm gonna do a video separately of how to hook up any controller to the motor. Um, so basically, you know, you can take out the old controller, put it in, hook it up to the motor, connect it to the battery, and then it works. So it's a much cheaper fix now to get, instead of getting a whole bike, you can just get a replacement hub motor and you know make this into a functional bike now so i'm gonna on this one i'm gonna change the hub motor now all right guys the hub motor is on so it's a fully functional e-bike now again so much better option than like buying another two thousand dollar bike put a hub motor on there and now you got ourselves an e-bike same thing if you mess up your battery or your controller just change the parts you don't gotta get a whole e-bike all right guys so if you guys enjoyed this video uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and now, best part about this job, I get to ride an e-bike every day. See you guys.